So you've made it past my beginner video. You understand the concept of passages and links. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to get serious. Now I need to teach you how to be like a real serious user of Twine. So let's go over some, some next steps. So first of all, I really want to remind you that um, not only am I making videos, but I have written out guides with all the code that I'm using from all these things. And you're going to find that at adamhammond.com forward slash Twine guide. Um, so keep that open so that you can like cut and paste code along with me if you don't feel like just uh, you know squinching your eyes and trying to figure out exactly what I'm typing. The next thing is it's at this point that we are going to download the offline version of Twine. The main reason I don't like the online version of code, pardon me, of Twine, is it's a little unclear where your game actually is. It might feel like by clicking like use it online and you see your games, it's all familiar. It might seem like it's saving it on twinery.org, but it's not. It's actually saving the game in your browser history, which is kind of a strange concept. So it's actually in the Chrome browser history on my computer. If I loaded up twine.org on any other computer or in any other browser, for instance, I go to twinery.org in a different browser, in this case, Safari, uh, and I click, assuming that it eventually loads. Uh, if I click on use it online now, it's it doesn't remember me. It doesn't know my stories. So that's because it's only saved in the browser history of Chrome. It's kind of weird, right? This means that if you were to like, uh, if you were to delete your browser history, like doing this clear browsing data, it would actually delete your game, which is a little distressing. So the main reason I want to uh, encourage you to use the offline version of Twine is that at least you kind of know where it's being saved. It's going to save your games on your computer, on your hard drive, and if you accidentally clear your browsing history, your games are not going to be suddenly uh, disappeared. So I'm using a Mac. I'm going to click on OS X to download it, and there it goes. It's going to take about a minute to download on my computer. So um, here's another little trick. I'm going to teach you two little things about Twine games, which is going to allow you to transfer your game into the, from the online to the uh, offline version. So when you're making a game in Twine, really the most exciting thing about Twine, like it's easy to use, that's great, but the coolest, coolest thing about Twine is that it publishes games in HTML and CSS. These are the languages of the web. This means that you actually play your game in a web browser, which means you can play your game on a computer, in Chrome, in Safari, in Firefox, or you can play your game like on a phone or a tablet because it's such a universal language. You don't need a special console to play a Twine game. It plays in your own, uh, in a regular web browser. So for now, all that we've been doing is clicking play to see a preview of the game. But if you actually wanted to really like say share this with someone, what you would do is you would go to publish to file. This is a crucial thing. Okay, really make note of this. This is where you save or export your game. If you're using the online version, it's going to like download that file. I'm just going to follow. Where did you just put that? Okay, I put it in my downloads folder. I'm going to say drag that on into my documents, which is where I feel like saving things right now. So that is actually the exported version of the game I made, and you'll see it's a .html file. So if I double-clicked it, it will just open up in a web browser, and it will work exactly the way that I had it going in the last video. Um, I could actually open this if I wanted to open it in a different browser. It doesn't only work in Chrome. It works in any web browser. So if I option-clicked it and said open with Safari, it's going to work exactly the same way that it uh, that it worked online. All right. So there's another reason that it's good to save your game as an HTML file too, and we'll get to that in a second. So I just downloaded Twine. I'm going to double click on it. It's going to unzip into a folder called NW for some reason. And there is something called Twine and then OS X64. Finally, when you get to this thing, drag that into your applications if you're on a Mac. The procedure will be a little different if you're on Windows or something else. 
So now if you go to applications and you go to open it, you'll be able to have the like actual offline app version of Twine. So a lot of you, if you try double clicking, it's gonna give you this like warning. This is from an unidentified developer and it won't let you actually use Twine. So what you need to do is hold down the control button on your keyboard and click and then click on the open button and it will give you another screen where you can click. I uh, see this is the exact thing. Uh, it's downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? And so I'm going to say open and then it actually works. So that's a, that'll only be a Mac thing, but it's pretty annoying. And it's just because Apple like doesn't recognize Twine as a real developer. So I now have the offline version up and running. And as you can see, it actually looks almost exactly like the online version. Um, and it is really, there's a few little differences. Um, like I said, the main one being that when you save something in the offline version of Twine, which has this logo down here, by the way, um, you actually have some sense of where it is. I'm just gonna move mine to a happier location on my toolbar. So the thing for right now is, okay, we made this glorious game in the, on the online version. We wanna actually have it in our offline version. So what we've done, we've already done the first really important step. We did this, published a file, and then it downloaded onto our hard drive, um, and we moved it into documents. So now if we want to open the game we previously made in the offline version, I'm going to go import from file, and I'm going to point it to the place that I just saved my hallway game, which is right there in documents, hallway game, open. And so now we have, it's kind of a, it's, it's very cool the way that this works. You can both just double click on an HTML file that Twine produces and play it, or you can open it in Twine and edit it. This actually means that anytime you play a Twine game online, you could just save it to your hard drive, open it up in Twine, and then edit it and basically see how it's made, which is pretty awesome. Okay, but for now, I've achieved first very important thing. Okay, I've exported from the online version of Twine and brought it into my offline version. So I'm gonna close the online version and continue just to work in the offline downloaded uh, version of Twine. So this is where we're gonna do everything from now on. Okay, next thing. So this is a video about making it look nice. Um, that's, we've gotten to that step now. So how do you alter the appearance? of a Twine game? The answer is all with uh, CSS coding. So the thing, like I mentioned, the thing that's great about Twine is it publishes to HTML files and um, that means that you can just play them in a web browser. It also means that anything you can do on a web page, you can do in your Twine game, which is extremely empowering. The way that you alter the appearance of a web page is with a language called CSS. Every web page you ever open in your life is styled. That's what it's called with a language called CSS. And one of the great things about CSS is like there is the world's largest community uh, of how to do stuff in CSS online because the entire web is built on it. So if you wanna know how to change the font color of something using the CSS language, just Google CSS font color and you're gonna get an extremely good answer right away. It's always the case basically with CSS Google searches that the first thing you get is gonna tell you how to do it. For instance, uh, the W3 schools is gonna tell you that if you wanna change the color of font, you use a property called color. In these videos, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about what HTML and CSS are or how they work because I made another series of videos about this and it's kind of a big topic. So if you don't know anything about HTML and CSS, I encourage you to go to this URL um, and look at my guide, which has a bunch of videos, but there's so many, so many guides of how to use HTML and CSS online because the web is built from it. There's a lot of tutorials, so go crazy. Uh, and the basic thing that you really need to know is when in doubt, Google CSS and then the thing you wanna do, like say you want a background image uh, in your game, um, CSS is the language. And so the first hit on Google is gonna be CSS background image property and this is the right answer. Okay, so back into Twine. So all the advice I'm gonna have from here on out is going to depend on you using a specific story format. Story formats are like a series of defaults. Defaults about how they look um, and what kind of coding you can use on them. I don't like Harlow. Harlow looks nice by default, definitely. 
but uh, it really limits you in terms of what you can do with HTML and CSS, and I don't like its programming language. So from now on, we're gonna use Sugarcube, which is by default very, very ugly, but that's actually positive because it encourages us to learn the coding that will make it look nice. Um, Sugarcube is a lot like, uh, it kind of replicates the, some of the behavior of the first version of Twine, and it's very powerful and by default very ugly, like I said, so we like it. We're gonna use Sugarcube 2.14, which is bundled, it comes with Twine. In later videos, we're gonna learn how to install even newer versions of Sugarcube, but don't use Sugarcube 1. Um, never, uh, for my videos, use Harlow or Snowman, okay? Sugarcube. So it's kind of annoying and confusing, but you need to remember a bunch of things about what you're working in. You're working in Twine 2.1, and you're using the Sugarcube story format. So Sugarcube, so remember our game, it used to be white with like pretty minimalist appearance. Now that we've changed the story format and we click play, uh, it's gonna be really, really gross. It's gonna have a sidebar. You can like save and restart, forwards and backwards buttons. Um, the worst of all has a black background with white text, an ugly font, and the font is tiny. So we have to, we're gonna learn how to change all that stuff, okay? And the answer is using CSS. Uh, by the way, in the offline version, when you click preview, the window kind of changes and just click the X. Don't worry, it's not going to exit you out of the program. It's just going to close the preview that you got by clicking play. Here is the place in Twine where you change the appearance of your game. It all happens in here, edit story style sheet. Um, you know, like there's some things I really like about Twine, like it makes the basics easy, making passages, links, very, very easy but it doesn't make it easy to change the appearance. Nowhere on here is like a bold button or a font button. You need to do everything in CSS, but this empowers you. This is good, okay? A lot of people like, especially artistic, story writing, literary inclined people um, are never encouraged to learn coding, but Twine is like secretly encouraging you to learn a bunch of different types of coding in order to make your games look good. It's like the little carrot dangled at the end of a stick here. Uh, if you want your story to stand out, gotta learn coding. So CSS coding happens here in this edit story style sheet. It says any CSS entered here will override the default appearance of your story. Cool. So the way to change the default defaults, the like basics that apply to every passage of your story is by using a CSS selector called body. Remember, I have a video that explains the basics of CSS. Body, um, anything you do to body is gonna affect um, the default appearance of the entire game. So here's how CSS works. You put a selector in, you do curly brackets, and then you put a property. I'm gonna use the, back, the property um, background color. Background color. You'll see that uh, Twine is kind of being helpful if you've entered an invalid CSS property. It's all like red and scary, but if you've entered a valid one, it turns green. The property is background color, then you do a colon, and then you say the value. I'm gonna pick white. Um, just like, again, to remind you, say you wanted to know what's the CSS selector for, or the CSS property for background, you'd do CSS background color, and it would take you to a link that would immediately tell you that what you do is background dash color and then the name of a color. You can also use hex codes or RGB codes, but I like, um, I just like words. Uh, if I wanted to get a full list of all the CSS colors, I would Google CSS colors and it would take me to this page, which has all of the supported CSS colors um, along with their hex codes and stuff. But I like words, so I'm gonna leave this open actually because we're gonna wanna use these. But you'll find that white um, is indeed a supported CSS color. That's the one that I want, just the word white. And it doesn't pay attention to capitalization, by the way. So background color white, so if I just don't change anything, I close this, I hit play, I'm now gonna see that my game has a white background. My text is now pretty much illegible, but I've changed, for me, one of the most egregious things about the default style. Okay, I'm gonna change more stuff now. This is all written out uh, on the, the website, um, adamhammond.com forward slash twine guide. Uh, you can get all the code that I'm gonna enter, but just follow along. Color is a CSS property for changing the text color. I'm gonna pick dark gray. I think it wants me to say gray AY, but it'll work for both. I'm Canadian, I spell it EY. 
Okay, font family is the property to change the font. The way that font family works is you give it like first choice, second choice, third choice, because not everyone has every font. I'm gonna say Futura is my first choice, then Impact, then Helvetica, then any sans serif font. And finally, I'm gonna say I want a nice big font size. I'm gonna make it like 150%, i.e. 50% bigger than it is by default. All right, close, play. I'm starting to be a very happy person now. Okay, I've got big fonts. The gray color is pretty legible. Um, it's a white background. Good, good, good. So let's keep changing more stuff and making it look nice. Okay, let's say I don't like the way that my links uh, look. So the way that I change this is the same way that I change link appearance on any website. Remember. When in doubt, Google CSS link color, and it will tell you that the way to style links is to use the A uh, selector, which happens to be the HTML element for any link. So we're going to do that very same thing. We're editing the style sheet. I'm going to say A color red. I want my links to be red. Remember, you can pick any CSS color. So if instead of red you wanted tomato, let's just go ahead and use tomato instead because it's kind of a fun word. Tomato. If I enter something other than a, like, see if it's not a real recognized CSS color, twine color is it green, but tomato is recognized. So I want it to be red. Close. Play preview. Now links are tomato. Awesome. You notice how when I hover over top of them, they now turn uh, blue. Let's say I don't particularly like that. Well, let's edit the style sheet and say, okay, here's how you control when you hover over something. CSS, you have the selector element, A for links, and then hover is a selector that says, um, behave this way when someone's hovering their mouse over something. So now it's going to turn Crimson, another color I discovered on that CSS color picker. Um, and now when I play it, when I hover it, it turns a darker shade of red. Pretty cool, huh? One more thing I'll show you. I don't think this is actually on the code on my website, but let's say that when I hover over it, I want to have like a really thick line, not just a, a pretty thin line like it has right now. So I would affect the border, border bottom, Again, this is just something I learned by Googling. Let's make it like five pixels solid and uh, make it also, let's make it blue. It's gonna like have a blue underlining that's solid. So now you see that when I hover, I've got like two underlines. I've got the default underlining and then this big, exciting, actually kind of ugly um, blue line so if I wanted to make that actually look proper, I would change, um, I would turn off the default underlining, which you do with text decoration and set it to none. Um, yeah, border bottom, five pixels solid. So now I've got this kind of interesting link setup where when you hover over, you get a pretty big, thick underlining. All right, cool. So we're changing the default. This is all very good. So let's say I want to change not just the default for the whole game, but actually change it so if I click on a particular passage, it behaves slightly differently. So in my game, as you will recall, if you click on the door on the right, you're in this like red painted room and there's like a circus mural. Let's not worry about the circus mural for right now, but let's say that when you click on this passage and this passage only, it turns the background red. Okay, here's it's a two-step process. Again, it relates to CSS, um, but Twine makes it kind of easy for us. First, we have to add a tag. So let's call, like, we're going to call circus room is the tag that we're going to apply. So um, this needs to match something in the CSS, but here we're saying, like, okay, this passage is tagged circus room. So when we make a, what is called a CSS class called circus room, uh, it's going to apply to this one. And actually, if we went in and say tag this one, we could also tag it circus room and the same stuff would apply. For now, we'll just tag the one circus room and we're good. 
So you need to go to style sheet and then what you need to do to affect just the things tagged with a particular tag is you type a dot or period and then it needs to match circus room. Anything I enter here is going to apply only to passages um, that are tagged circus room. So here let's say I want background color to be red. Let's say here I want the text color to be white. And let's even say I want to affect so that the links are different colors here. Um, if I wanted the links in circus room, I would say a dot circus room and I would make the color um, like black. So now on that page only I have black links. If I close this, play, go into circus room, now I'll see that uh, I've got everything going in an exciting way. Uh, I've got my uh, background color is red and actually my links didn't work but we're just gonna forget about that for now because I'm not sure exactly why that didn't work. So, cool. All right, so that's how you affect an individual passage. And let's say if we did add the tag circus room to the front page, for instance, now that passage would also uh, appear with the special uh, defaults for circus room. All right, I'm gonna remove that tag because it's not really appropriate. Okay, so play it. Just the one we tagged has the red background. Continue on. This one does not have the red background because it's not tagged. Circus room. Cool. Okay. Now, other really important things, like say you're playing this and you're like, okay, my game looks okay, but I, God, I hate this sidebar. I want the sidebar to be gone. Thankfully, I can tell you that it's in CSS that you uh, do this and you can remove it. I figured this out, by the way, by um, loading my game up in a web browser and viewing the source. I figured out how to turn this off, but for now I'll just tell you how to do it and I'll let you uh, worry about um, if you actually, the process is kind of another story. So UI dash bar with a dollar sign in front of it, pardon me, a number sign, display none. That will hide the sidebar. Thank you, CSS. So now if you play it, uh, you will see that the sidebar is gone. Unfortunately, you'll also see that uh, there's now like a big gaping space at the side of your game. Don't worry, we can fix that too. Go to edit story style sheet and add in the following. Story, margin left, 3.5 EM. That's just telling what the margin is in a unit known as EM. So now you play it and you're gonna have a nicely centered game. Like this looks so good. It basically kind of only looks as good as the default Harlow, but the exciting thing is that we made it look like this. We made all these decisions. I'm gonna show you one more little trick. This is unfortunately gonna have absolutely no relationship to this story, but uh, it's kind of cool. Okay, let's say um, if you want to change the whole appearance of a passage, you just use this tag thing and then create a matching CSS class. Let's say you just want to uh, change the appearance of part of a passage, not the whole passage. So let's say, for instance, I just want this word forever to appear like really, really big and maybe in a different color. Um, there's no built-in hand-holding method in Twine to do this. You need to use... Um, you just need to use regular HTML. Again, this is the power of, of Twine because it doesn't hold your hand, um, but it also doesn't restrict you. You can just throw HTML tags into any passage of text and you can do like anything you want. In HTML, the way that you would uh, affect the appearance of just a single word or part of a paragraph, for instance, is with span and then class. I'm gonna call, create a CSS class called big text that's just going to apply to forever. And then I'm gonna close the HTML span. Basically what I'm doing here is the exact same thing as tagging, but I'm not using any kind of shortcut. I'm using like the raw HTML. I'm saying look for instructions on how to display the word forever by looking in the CSS for a class called big text. So then I need to 
create a class called big text. Class is always going to have a period, big text. Um, and I'm going to say font size is 300%. This is genuinely going to be large. And color is black. So if I've done my job correctly, now when I go into the door on the right and enter it at the end, there it is. See, just that one word has been changed. It's bigger and it's black. And I just used the HTML span and notice that none of that code appears because um, it's actually being interpreted by the web browser. It's not really Twine that's interpreting it, right? You're sending instructions to a web browser. So anything you can do in the web page, you can do in a Twine game. You can just stick your own HTML in. Another example of something fun, say, like I don't want to just change um, a, uh, a particular word, but I want to create like a big block on this text that I can style with CSS to do cool things. Uh, here's the example from my code that you find on the website. So this is irrelevant to the story, sorry. But let's say at the bottom of this page, um, I'll just say, click for an irrelevant addition. I'm going to create a passage called UFOs. So now in this passage called UFOs, it says there is a spooky UFO in the sky. When you look at it, it disappears. But you're sure it's there. So I want to do this cool uh, like say I have a passage like this in my game and I want to recreate for the reader the feeling of being there and like looking at a UFO but every time you look at it it disappears. I want to do this cool thing where when they're uh, when they hover over the words when you look at it it disappears. The actual text disappears. So the way that I could do this is by okay I'm going to create uh, a div. Again refer to my videos on CSS to learn or HTML and CSS to learn like what a div is. I'm going to give the div a class called aliens and I'm going to close that div. So again I've created a CSS class and it applies to this paragraph here which is put off in its own div. So now if I go into my style sheet and create a class called aliens and put in the code that I've um, entered in my CSS. So now when the user hovers over that div with the class of aliens, uh, it's going to do the following. This is just something I picked up by Googling, like how do you make text disappear? Uh, let me get two seconds. Ease. All ease. Okay, this is going to create a cool CSS effect that when you hover over it, it makes it disappear. So now I'm going to click play, navigate through my game to the irrelevant edition. So now when I hover over that text, it disappears. Again, it's not like Twine built in some cool way of having you make text disappear. It's just a CSS effect. Again, anything you see on a website, on a web page, uh, you can do it in Twine. You just have to copy the way that they used CSS. Okay. Um, that is it for now. Again, if I wanted to like save this game, I would click on publish to file. Um, this is what it looks like when you try to publish to file uh, in the offline version. So let's say I want to stick this in my documents and I want to call it hallway game. I click save. It's going to ask me if I want to replace the old one. Let's say that I do. So now if I just navigate uh, to where I had that saved and I double click, it's going to open it in a web browser exactly the same way. I could now email that file to anyone or put it up on the web and it would work perfectly. Okay, so that's it for this video on styling. Remember, anything you want to do, just Google it, um, like CSS background image. I didn't show you how to do that, but um, if you just Google it, you can do it yourself. but literally anything, anything related to uh, appearance, just Google CSS and the thing that you want to change uh, and you're good.
Okay, next video I'm going to do is going to be about how to add images in music. It's much harder than it actually sounds, um, and then, but totally worth the struggle. And then I'll do another video on programming. So if you're interested and you've made it this far and you want to keep going, there are more videos to show you. Just to, by the way, if you were wondering how to actually get that link to, to change the link in a particular passage where you've done a tag to it, um, my on the fly uh, improvised suggestion was to do a dot and then the, the name of the class you'd created. But in fact, what you need to do is the class you've created space a that will change the link to black. And you can also do like, uh, tag and then a hover and make it um, like yellow. Not crucial information, but it does work and it did bother me enough to spend about 10 minutes after making that last video looking for it. So yeah, now it's now it's black and when you hover it's red. So you can copy that code, just standard CSS stuff.